too. Well, welcome back to Billy Henderson Stadium where Clark Central is enjoying a 7 nothing lead. As my favorite announcer says, you are looking live at Billy Henderson Stadium right here at Clark Central High School against uh, Clark Central High School Gladiators taking on the North Oconee Titans. Uh, welcome back, and uh, we're getting ready to start the second half of the scrimmage here at Clark Central High School against North Oconee. Buster, we had some... Uh, Good action there in the first half. We had some great action, and North Oak County showed why they finished the season 11 and 1 last year uh, with that defense. They've got a great, speedy, quick defense. Uh, Clark Central's defense just as fast, but the offense finally hit its stride there in the latter part of the second quarter. Uh, saw some good things out of Willingham, the running back, and Payne, the running back for Clark Central. And uh, I, I look forward to a second half, and I look forward to some more uh, hard hitting on both sides of the ball. Yeah, there was a lot of hard hitting all night. Uh, you know, I think Willingham came in and, and gave us a little bit of spark on the offensive side, and then then the big block punt, I think, gave the offense a little confidence to do what they needed to do. I'm really looking forward to see what we can do in two quarters now with, with the offense getting a little, little confidence. Yeah, and two big plays, the fumble that stopped the North Oak County drive when they had gotten down, I think, to our 20-something yard line. That was huge. And then, of course, the block punt by uh, Drico Statum set up the Clark Central score from the 25 out. So uh, defense doing their thing. And if we can just get the offense on the same page, I think we'll be okay. Well, I can tell you the many years that I've spent in the locker room with Coach Riles uh, before we started the GITV coverage, uh, he's keeping that team in there in the locker room right now. They're, he's chewing on some tail about that offense. I don't think he was real happy about the uh, first half. No, and, and uh, you know, it all starts with the line, and, you know, they got to do their job so the special uh, guys can do their job, and they'll pull it together. I mean, it's always, like you said earlier in the game, the defense usually is a step ahead this time of year, yeah. uh, more th more so than the offense. A minute to go, and the Gladiators are just now coming onto the field, but I uh, want to talk about what we got coming up here. Uh, next week, of course, the Gladiators open the season at home against Maris War Eagles, of course, uh, quad uh, 4A school out of North Atlanta Catholic High School. Uh, actual enrollment has them about a double A, but they've been playing 4A ball forever, forever, and and they're very good. They're they're very they're very sound. Uh, they. They have been to the state playoffs the last 29 years in a row. Uh, they're they're not your typical opening night opponent. They're not somebody you want to try to work the bugs out. You better have the bugs worked out when you get a hold of these guys. No doubt. If we can't come out and play like we did tonight against a team like that, or we're going to be down two or three touchdowns. Of course, 2012 season opener, Friday, August 31st at 7.30. The graphics got And we'll be on the air at 7, but, yeah, you're correct. Kickoff's at 7.30. Kickoff's at 7.30 live from Athens, Georgia, right here at Billy Henderson Stadium as the Marist War Eagles travel to Athens to take on the Clark Central Gladiators only on GITV. Of course, you can catch us each and every week at Clark Central. It's www.clarkcentralgitv.com. Catch us each and every Friday to take on, as the Gladiators take on uh, their foes home and away. And, of course, every Thursday night you'll be able to catch the C team or the B team uh, in action. And, Buster, let's get into our, our region opens up next week. Yeah, also. there's a bunch of big games. Look at that second one there on the left. Yeah, Northside Warner Robins taking on Flowery Branch. That's number two in the state, taking on number eight in the state. And, boy, what a, what a start. But, you know, you got two and eight there, and in, in our ball game, you got number five and four A taking on number eleven in. in uh, right, but the bigger thing with that Northside Flyer Branch game, somebody's going to lose, and that's going to hurt them in the polls. I okay. mean, right off the bat. But hats off to both of those schools taking on each other that early. And, and of course, West Forsyth taking on uh, number nine Gainesville, and Northgate taking on Heritage, who's gotten some mention on some votes. They're also in the top twenty. Rockdale County, uh, Crosstown rival taking on Salem. Rockdale's moved up to 6A. Salem is still in our region. Of course, Hart County 
taking on Cedar Shoals, Loganville taking on Monroe, Purple Hurricanes, and Appalachian Wildcats taking on Lanier out of Gwinnett County. And, of course, Winder Bearer taking on Jackson County. I mean, that's just a slight of great games to open up the, the season. I, and, I mean, we'll be keeping in touch with those scores of those games just as much as we're going to be bringing you the Clark Central Marist game. But, uh, yeah, football's here. It's, it's in full gear. I can't wait for next Friday. And then, of course, the college season opens up the day after on Saturday. So That's, that's right. With a 9 a.m. start with the uh, Notre Dame Fighting Irish taking on the Navy from Dublin, Ireland. Yeah, right a, little, a little too much gold in that game for me. That'll be hard to watch on the TV. It'll be a little hard on the eyes. Why don't we send it down uh, to, to Holly and see what we got going on down on the sidelines, Buster. Holly, what you got? Chuck, I've got a special player down here with me on the sidelines walking around and encouraging the players. This is Cornelius Washington. Cornelius is a University of Georgia football player. and He did an internship this summer here at Clark Central and built a lot of relationships with these kids. And uh, Cornelius played at Burke County High School. Cornelius, what's it like down here on the sidelines with these guys tonight? Uh, kind of bring back memories, you know, of my high school days going out battling with the guys. But uh, it's just good to be out here, good to see you guys doing well so far. Well, I'm as you can see, in the midst of a lot of red and gold and Cornelius, we appreciate your support, and you can guarantee these gladiators will be supporting you next Saturday. Uh, when okay, Holly, thank you very much for that uh, sideline report. And, uh, and Holly, tell, tell Cornelius every time I go see my uh, daughter-in-law and son-in-law down in Savannah, I always stop down there in Burke County and Waynesboro to eat at that Burger King. So uh, good place, Burke County. They, they are good people. And they had a good run last year, Burke County. All right, back deep for the Gladiators, number 28, Jelani Payne, and number 6, Rodney Willingham. Of course, the transfer from Cedar Shoals over the, over the summer. Uh, Rodney's going to be a senior. Back deep uh, kicking, I can't see that. Their numbers are hard. Yeah, they, they've got those uh, kind of like those Tennessee Titan numbers. Can't really tell if it's a 6 or a 3 or an 8, so uh, we'll just do our best. Kick off by North Oconee. Short end over end kick. Going to be received around the 15-yard line. They'll blow it dead. So, uh, Clark Central on offense to start the second half. We enjoy a 7-0 lead. Well, the one thing I do like about Willingham, he's very sure-handed. I've seen him uh, two or three times. and uh, Yeah, he's, he's got some good. Everything else. So, it, mm-hmm. you know, it, I, he, look, he looks good. It's of course, they'll adjust the ball to the 30 to start. That was the rules that Coach Rouse and Coach Tully set up before this scrimmage started. And uh, Kind of so, unusual looking down there. Deshaun White wearing number 69. That brings back old memories of my son there. Okay. Nicholas, the coach on the coaching staff now at Clark Central, as we hand off to the left side and pick up four on the play. Maxi on the carry. Number eight in on the tackle for North Oak County. That's uh, Zantavius Shields. Jelani Payne deep in the backfield for the Gladiators. Cameron Johnson under center. So Cameron under center. It's going to be second and about six. Johnson throws to the right side complete, but met immediately around the uh, 36-yard line. Looks like number 28 on the coverage, uh, Jordan Glover. It's going to be third, and we'll call it two and a half. A little better sync with us, uh, situation here for the Gladiators. A little more sync and sync. Coming out, getting a little yardage on first down, and then uh, another completion yeah. on second. Yeah, the offensive line seems like they're playing a little bit more standoff type football now, and Cameron's kind of in, in, in step a little bit more than he was earlier. And we're going to fake a handoff to the left side. Cameron's got room to the right. He's going to throw and in and out of the hands. And I don't know if that was uh, Drico or not. I don't think it was Drico, but. Uh, Number 20, is that, was that Maxi? 35 downfield? I believe it 85. was. 85, I'm sorry. Quavon Scott. Yeah, and, you know, he had Maxi open there on that play. That was just a bad decision by that. Yeah, I think Cameron honestly should have just took it up and run. He could have got the first down pretty easy. So we kick it off, or opponent, I'm sorry, to about the 30, 31 yard line. Rolls out of bounds around the 25. And North Oconee will start on their 30. 
Seven nothing Gladiators lead. We were beneficiaries of a block punt by Drico Stab that put us in business on the North Oconee 25 yard line late in the first half. I've been very impressed with uh, Matt, uh, Jermaine. Yeah, he's been uh, Max Jermaine. I've, I'm not able to. Uh, and we're uh, experiencing some technical difficulties here, but I think we got our sound back now. Can you hear me now, Buzz? I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, I've been impressed with Max Germain tonight punting the ball. He's looked very good. North Oconee, they're going to do a little handoff up the middle, but I seen a gladiator put a hat on him, number, yeah, number 20. 20. Kayvon Williams. Kayvon Williams. Nice stick up the middle there. So Kayvon seeing some action at middle linebacker. Very impressed with that initial front line, that T.J. Ellison sophomore, 5'10", 222. Uh, of course, number 97, Allen Bam Bam Miller, a junior, 5'11", 237. And uh, the big man, number 98, Damon Stovall, senior, 5'10", 300 pounds. Second, we'll call it seven, Titans. Look to the left side, complete to the right for a first down and maybe two or three more yards. Nice job by Coven, the quarterback, on that pass. Yeah, Javon uh, Hemphill and number 21 over there on the initial tackle, Waikie Watson. Of course, that outside linebacker almost jumped up and knocked that ball out of the air. Yeah, I, I thought we would see uh, Clark Central's defense come out and start trying to jump some of these short underneath routes. But North Oconee, give them credit. So far, very successful with that strategy. Didn't get anything there on that offensive play as he was met in the backfield by big DeMond Stovall, Colvin, and, of course, Kayvon Williams coming in to help out there on the tackle. But, boy, DeMond Stovall has just been a man amongst boys out there tonight. Yeah, other than the 26-yard run earlier by Kayvon Bryant that uh, was early in the second quarter, Oconee, North Oconee not doing much on the ground here. That lost yardage on that play. Second, we'll call it 12. North Oconee sitting on the 36. And they bobble the snap, but they pick it up in time. And this time a nice run by the North Oconee Titan running back. And I'm going to try to get you a number. Number one, was it Bryant? Was that number one? Yeah, Brian. Okay, Brian. It just didn't look like number one. I apologize. Driven out of bounds by uh, number 21, Waikie Watson, and number 17, Drico State. And big, big yard, big gain there. That's the best run probably of the night for them. Well, I could have swore that was number eight, uh, Zantravius Shields. But either way, it was a great run. North Oklahoma Coven this time on the quarterback keeper, and he's going to sprint down the side. He may go. He's got one man to beat, and he's going to score. There you go. We're tied. Or 7-6, I'm sorry. He got around that corner and just was gone. Good speed there by Colton. He outran our secondary, and that's hard to do. i tell you what, he just tucked it up and ran down the sidelines. I think Clark Central thought he might be going out of bounds, but when he saw the pursuit lighting up, yeah, he just no took doubt. off. No doubt. you got you got Great play. awareness. Got play to the whistle. Great awareness by the quarterback, Colvin. North Oconee, they were them one. That's 7-6. The extra point try. The kick is up. And the kick no is good. no good. Wide so left. Clark Central catches another break. And uh, we enjoy a one-point lead. And now we've got to tighten up the chin strap and realize these guys can play football. Well, Coach Self is really doing some chewing. Uh, you know, and that's that's the thing. you got to play through the whistle. And then I don't care if it's a scrimmage or – inter-squad scrimmage or, you know, a, a scrimmage against another team, you got to play through the whistle. And, and we let up on that play and gave him the corner. And, you know, with speed like they have, you, you just can't do that. Well, we saw their speed on defense several times tonight, but uh, definitely the quarterback, he showed it off there. I mean, he yeah. turned them Jets on. Yeah, he sure did. Uh, Good-looking athlete. So the play was about uh, – it was from the 36. Do you match up? 64 yard touchdown run? That's, I guess that's no, what no, it was. No, 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 no. 40 yards. They were on the 40, so a 60 yard touchdown run on the quarterback keeper by Colvin. Great run. Or was it our 40? I'm that's sorry. Right. I'm for Okay, my bad. 40 yard run by so Colvin makes man, it 7 6. Well, actually, I think it was a 36. Might have been a 46. 
Um, we'll get you straight. We don't have a statistician up there. Yeah, Chaz Crumpton <laughs> taking the night off. He's sitting up there in commerce with that brand new baby girl, Layla Crumpton. Back who's deep, been a joy. Back deep, Jelani Payne and uh, Rodney Willingham, and kicks to Willingham. He takes a fair catch at the 15, 16 yard line. Of course, we'll start the ball again at our own 30, and we got to get this offense to get the movement again. 7 6 our score. North Oconee has answered our late first down touchdown with a touchdown of their own. So Clark Central will start first and 10 on the 30. Looks like Maxie and uh, Willingham will start off in the backfield this time. I, I like the looks of Willingham out of the backfield. I think he does, uh, he, he, he gets a little spurt there for us. Well, it just suit me to run Willingham from 20 to 20 and run Payne inside the 20 to the goal line. I think that'd be a good one, too. Here goes Willingham and initially started with a burst but got met head on at the yeah. line for no gain. Line of scrimmage right there at 96 Garrett Maddox. And number 50 also on the tackle. Uh, it's Braden Maxson. 8.36 to go. Third quarter action. Clark Central picks up a yard on the play. It'll be second yeah, and gain, nine. Gain of one. So, but you got to do that. To keep them honest. Of course, this offensive line is is uh, working hard to get a little better. <laughs> wow. And Cameron's going to dance and run right. Does that little quarterback draw and picks up about six, maybe seven yards when he extended his frame out. Nice play, Cameron. Yeah, brought down by number 21, Bradley Glenn, and number 50 again, Great Maxie on the tackle. So that gives us a third workable situation here. Third and about three and a half, maybe four. Willingham still the lone setback. Cameron with two receivers to the right, one over here close to the sideline. 7.41 to go. Clark Central enjoys a one-point lead, 7-6 over North Oconee. And this time we're going to give to Willingham, who breaks to the outside. And he's got some room if he can cut. Oh, and hit hard. He could, but he got the first down. I think he got the first, and thank goodness he held onto the ball. But he was met immediately. Yeah, number three on the track tackle, Dakota Green. Uh, Good-looking linebacker, 12th grader out there, 5'11", 205, and he laid the lump. I'll tell you what, he brought it. He but you saw Willingham it. get around that corner and made a move. I mean, he could have got hit a lot sooner, but made a move to get, get the extra yards. Well, yeah, and, he, and he didn't shy away from the lick that he knew he was going to get either. No, he, no doubt about it. Neither one it. of them, Payne or him, either one will, will shy away. Johnson on the line. We're on the 40. First and 10, Gladiators. And we're going to give to Willingham again. Got a nice hole around left side, and he picked up about two and a half, maybe three, before he's driven back. And, and that's a little better job right there. We were getting a little bit of push from that offensive line on that one, on that play. Number 40, of course, on the tackle, uh, Noah Myers. And, of course, Dakota Green also in there. But we got a little bit of push in there, and we got two or three yards on the game. 7-6 our score, 6.30 to go, third quarter action. I'll take that on first down instead of that. Well, yeah, that first, first half we couldn't gain a yard to save our lives. Second, call it six, or seven. Cameron over to the left side to Jaquan Downey, who's got room. Jaquan Downey, if he can break a tackle, and he's knocked out of bounds by number eight. Number eight, yeah, that's uh, Zantavius Shields. But not before Downey picks up about... 18, 19 yards on the play. It's going to be a Clark Central first down. They're going to put the ball just outside the 36-yard line in North Oconee territory. You know, Buster, I think he could have been going there, but that pass was a little high from Cameron. He had to get up to get it. If he could have caught it. Caught it in stride. Yeah. And, uh, again, timing issues. They'll work those out. So, Clark Central threatening here in the third quarter. We give to Willingham. No, Cameron keeps it. He's going to shake a tackle and get out of bounds around the 32-yard uh, line. Once again, driven out of bounds by Dakota Green. Or Dakota, yes. I'll tell Dakota you what, that guy's covering a lot of ground, ain't he? Yeah. A very good block coming back by Greco Statham to give him another couple yards. Second down, caught seven. Of course, they got their quarterback in, number 12, Colvin. He's uh, guarding uh, Drico Statham over here on the left. 
Yeah, and that, that's what you see in a lot of these situations with these uh, lower side lower sides because they play both sides of the line of scrimmage. You're absolutely right. And we've got a flag. What did we do? Referee's going to look. Illegal procedure. Clark Jeez, Central. Yes, go ahead. This is going to back us up five. Yep. And, and yep. I apologize. We're, we're – uh, I'm saying left side, but uh, – you know, now that we, we've got a little replay here in front of us, it's towards the bottom of your screen. So. There you go. Got Willingham in the backfield blocking. Cameron with trips to the right side. A play we have seen Clark run well over the last couple of years. And this time Cameron wants to go deep. He's going to chunk it about 20 yards. And I think it was complete. It was complete. Dakota Green, or no, excuse me, number five, uh, Travis Clark on the tackle. But that's good for a first down. Yeah, that's, that's Draco, Draco State. State. I mean, I'll tell you what, as good a hands as he had on defense last year, he's showing he can do it on the offensive side too. And But, uh, you know, I think Cameron's looking for him because he had Maxie open against right, the first down right. and went deeper. Yeah, Cameron showed a lot of patience, Chuck, on that play. A lot right. of patience. He looks good rolling now. Shotgun camera, and this time he throws to the left side and just under through Dowdy around the 24. I'll make it second and 10. Gladiators, 7 6 our score, 535 to go. Third quarter action here in this 2012 scrimmage. And as we are just a week and one day away from opening night, which will be here at Billy Henderson Stadium, Clark Central Entertains, Marist. And I mean, just a exciting first game uh, matchup between those two story programs. Johnson shotgun and this time gives to Willingham and Willingham got gobbled up in the backfield. Shook a tackler but he's knocked for a two yard yeah, loss. Anderson Carter made a good play on, the, on that in the backfield and, and Cameron probably should have kept it in that instance and uh, went ahead and handed it off. Number 61 for North Oak County Cameron Atkins in on the play. And, I, again, I'm very impressed with North Oak County's defense. Very quick, much like our own. Very fast, great pursuit to the ball. They don't give up a big play that often. Cameron shotgun. It's been all Cameron and Willingham this drive. Cameron this time throws it. Man down the middle, complete. Draco Stadium. Draco Stadium, touchdown, Gladiators. So Cameron with the patience and the poise waited for Drico to drift open, caught him down the middle in stride, and Drico did the rest from 10 yards out, took on a couple of tacklers and busted it for pay dirt. And Clark Central now is up 13-6. to six. What it, And that, that drive right there reminded me a little bit of last year, of course. Let me talk about the Max Germain on for the extra point. And we struggled there. Snaps a little high, gets down, and the kick is up. And it's good. So with 444, 446 left in the third quarter, your score, North Oconee Titans 6, Clark Central High School Gladiators 14. 14. Let's cut it down to uh, Holly on the sideline. Hey, Chuck, we've got uh, athletic director John Ward here tonight. And uh, Coach Ward, uh, it's a pretty good fan support tonight. Are you excited to see everyone coming out? Yes, uh, it's a great night, both for North, North Oak County High School and Clark Central High School. Great weather, great atmosphere to get the season started. Uh, as far as the athletic departments, this is giving us a little funding up front to uh, uh, get the 2012-2013 athletic year uh, underway. Well, as you know, football pays for everything else in the sports uh, arena here at Clark Central, so it's good to see some income coming in. Uh, exactly. Great to see. We have a lot of our students here, as does uh, North Oak County, and hopefully this is a good sign for both schools for uh, the upcoming season. Uh, Coach Ward, this is the first time these two teams have played each other, so what uh, brought you two together? Uh, we both were looking for a team to play in the preseason. A lot of our kids know each other growing up playing recreational ball together, so it was a perfect fit, and we'll go there next year, and uh, I look for another great scrimmage next year. Wonderful. That's here on the sidelines with Athletic Director John Ward. And uh, 
All right, thank you, Holly. And uh, we we missed the kickoff, but we wanted to have, go ahead and stay with Holly and Coach Ward. Of course, Dr. John Ward. Yeah, the creator of GITV there for all you folks who want to know where the vision came from. That was the man right there, the man knew, with the plan. We knew the kickoff was going to be returned to the 30-yard line to, to start the play, so we wanted to get that interview in and thank Holly again for her sideline reporting. So North Oak County trails by eight, and we're sitting at the 444 mark here in the third quarter. I'd like to see the defense on this series. Shut them down. Yeah, get a shutdown here and get the ball back quickly. Maybe we can do something here. Well, I guarantee they've got a newfound respect for Colvin's speed at quarterback. This time they do a little in the round thing, and they got room. First down and maybe three, four yards after the play, after the first down was made, and North Oconee turns out another first down, and they're finding something on the ends, Chuck. Yeah, but in that in that play, we were using a little bit of trickery there to get what they could. Of course, the return by number 26, J.J. Jared, uh, 21, 21, Waikai Watson uh, did a good job of reading it. And, of course, the uh, D.B. J uh, Israel on that side came back to make the tackle. But, yeah, gave up too much. The line of scrimmage has got to keep their eyes up and see where the play's going, where the ball's going. You can, you can see that set up, though, with that receiver. Yeah, I would jump. Three guys in red jerseys went across the line and told the North Oak County guys they're doing a good job blocking them tonight. And they'll get five yards assessed on the play. So it'll be first and five, and that's about the third, fourth time tonight North Oak County's had a first and five. Yeah, so the we ball. Can't, we can't make those kind of mistakes next week against the team no. at Maris County. No. First and five balls just shy of the 50. And nice run here. There's Bryant. He's got a little bit of room. Can he get to the corner? He runs out of bounds. Yeah, Draco out chased him. Draco staying, just a little tap there, but Bryant decided to go out of bounds. But that's going to be good for another North Oconee first down. Yeah, two plays, two first downs. North Oconee trying to answer the Clark Central score. Get the momentum started and you get go in for a score you can't can't let another team answer like this no and it's uh it, it's one of them things you just you got to you got to play with that momentum it's a big thing in football one play can turn the whole thing on a dime coven shotgun and he's gonna fake to the right roll left he's got a little pressure there's a flag on the play he had a man who he missed around the 17 yard line but let's see what the flag is holding against uh, North Oconee, but YK Watson was back there on the coverage in Draco Stadium, but he was open. He had found a seam in between the Gladiators, so Gladiators are lucky on that play. That... So it'll make it first, and will that be 15 or 20? Well, how many on the penalty? That's going to be a 10-yard from the okay. spot of the foul. So first and 20. Like Looks like the flags on the line of scrimmage made. Well, there's two flags down there. One's on the line of scrimmage. Well, they just picked up the one two yards. So it's going to be 10-yard penalty. It's going to be second or first and 20. Again, we want to give a big thanks to Alan Waller, Charlie Harris, our cameraman, Chris Crumpton, our engineer. Bringing all this stuff to you, all this good stuff to you that makes watching football so much more enjoyable. North Oconee, first and 20. They're There's gonna give to Bryant a little wedge right there, like an old fashioned running formation that picks up maybe three. Clark Central, good pursuit on the left side. Yeah, 33, uh, Cedric Armstrong and, and Drico Statham and, and uh, Number 21, Waikai Watson on the tackle. But, yeah, they line up uh, with uh, three backs in that backfield, and they quick snapped it straight to uh, Bryant. Yeah, something they tried earlier in the game that turned out to be a disaster inside their own 10. But uh, something they look like they want to implement with Bryant in the backfield, this little wildcat thing. Coven spins. Turns to his left, throws complete across the 35-yard line for a North Oconee 
Gain of, oh, let's give them eight, nine, maybe a, maybe ten yards on the play. Israel on the tackle, number five for the Gladiators. So 2.54 to go, third quarter. North Oconee finds themselves, I guess, third and about nine. Chain gang needs to get the There you go. Third and nine. Everybody's trying to get the cobwebs shaken off of them in time for next week when Maris comes to town. And Chuck, that's just a huge game. Big game. Yeah, it's a big momentum starter for the first year. There's Colvin on the keeper. Boy, I tell you what, elusive and fast. I mean, that's the kind of guy you want a quarterback. Yeah, that's going to be good for a first down. Ellison coming into the ballgame, number 51, number four, Cavante Buff, 94 going out. 2.23 to go. We're still in the third quarter, and after a very fast first half, it just seems like we've gotten to a snail's pace here in the third quarter. 14-6, Clark Central leads North Oconee, but North Oconee's, oh, they got a man jump. So that'll back them up. Slow their momentum down a little bit. Guys were moving uh, to the left on a stunt. And the North Oak County boy just took off. Just Probably jumped. Just time to go. So it's going to be first and 15. Okay. North Oak County is going to stretch out the field a little bit. Receivers to both sides. They've got two men in the backfield. Coven's looking, looking, looking to his safety valve, number 22, and drop number 22, Hayden Lewis, the intended receiver. Well, that's a good thing because there's a bunch of gladiators around it, but there's also a flag on the play. It's going to be holding against the uh, North Oak Coney Titans, and, of course, that flag's back five yards beyond the line of scrimmage. So if that's going to be where the penalties are going to occur. Well, they were seriously knocking on the door inside the 25 just two plays ago. Now they possibly could be backed up all the way to the 40. And they're going to place it right in, right inside the 40, call it 39 and a half yard line, and it'll be at least a positive thing for North Oconee, a first down. So you got four tries to go 20, 25 yards here. The pass is complete to uh, North Oconee, brought down by Jamie on Hemphill. So we hear there's people in South Carolina enjoying this broadcast, and we want to say hello to you people, and thank you for posting that you're liking the uh, Gladiator broadcast here on GI TV. Yeah, Just, of course, you can catch it, check, uh, check us out and like us on uh, Facebook at Gladiator Internet TV, and, of course, check us out each and every Friday night right here at Clark Central, GITV.com. Well, it's just a beautiful thing to be on the internet. People in all reaches of the world can watch Clark Central football, no matter where you're at. Well, the pass was intended to uh, number 80 for the for the Titans. They're going to get Browner for a push Zach or a hold one. But he went left. The quarterback went right. And uh, looks like they're going to call interference. Oh, against play. Now... Will that just be a spot foul? Will that be an automatic first down? Or? Well, I think it's going to be a 15-yard penalty, so it's going to bring up second in about three or four. Wow. Now they're inside the 20. They're seriously knocking on the door. 14-6 to score. North Oconee with a big break here. Pass interference call. Puts them inside the 20. Now it's going to be automatic first down, Chuck. About time for a turnover. So first and 10. Inside the 20, and that puts a new wrinkle in it. Coven, all receivers, by himself in the backfield. He's looking to the right. He's going to lob it to the end zone just out of the reach of the receiver. That ball was 10 yards outside, out of bounds. Yeah, that one wasn't even close. Israel but he was back, there. Israel back on the coverage in, in, uh, for the Gladiators. And Drico Browner. 1.16 to go, third quarter. North Oconee inside the 20. Of course, both teams are looking at all different types of things tonight. So, 
know, this is not one of those games you want to win. I mean, you want to win the ball game, but you, you want to make sure you don't get anybody hurt, and you want to make sure you're looking at everything you want to see. Right. My, the main goal here is to run some plays, get some new faces, and stay healthy for your first game. Colvin, he's going to get gobbled up by Stovall. Good blitz there by the Gladiators. Of course, uh, Stovall and Hemphill in there on the rush. Miller. Of course, they're using Colvin in that sense. They're sending him out. And, I, you know, I, I don't know that I agree with that play. I don't think you want to take the ball out of his hands. Right. Now, Colvin, he's, uh, he's a weapon. That's for sure. 44 seconds to go in this third quarter. Clark Central trying to shut the door on this North Oconee drive. There's been times they've been inside the 20, but at this point right now they're – just outside the 25. Third and call it 15. Colvin, shotgun. Looking left, now down the middle. He's going to go left and nice catch by the North Oconee receiver. Is that Bryant? Looked like it was Bryant. He's going to be short of the first down. He brought down by Maxie, number 35. Denzel getting some time on defense. Oh, excuse me, Chica Nukem. Chica Nukem, that's a good name to hear, Chuck. Yes, it is. Good to hear that he's healthy. Fourth down and four yards to go. That's going to end the end third quarter the right there. End of the third quarter, and uh, let's take it down to uh, Holly down on the sidelines real quick. Uh, Buster and Chuck, I've got uh, Jack Murray here with us, who is head of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes here in the athens Oconee area. Jack, you work with a lot of these kids. appreciate you coming out tonight. Uh, thanks for coming. Tell us a little bit about your work that you do. FCA huddle at uh, right here at Clark Central, led by Coach Aaron Cavan, and over at North Oconee, uh, we have Ralph Moore, who's a cross country coach. And I just ran into him on the other sideline, so I'm kind of going back and forth. Well, Jack, we appreciate all that you do in supporting these young men. I know it makes a, a, a means a lot to them that you're here. We appreciate you being here. So back up to you guys. Great thing, Thanks. FCA Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and that's a good positive thing. Uh, for any kid at any age uh, when they get into sports to not only play sports with, with, with their all their heart and their ability, but to have their mind in the right place. And that's what FCA helps to do is get your mind right. And there you go. And right and now at the break, we just kind of want to show you uh, the new region, the 8-5A. Uh, of course, the region from, from right to left, you can see the Heritage Patriots. Yes, sir. The Salem Seminoles, the uh, Winder Barrow Bulldogs, the Appalachian Wildcats, and the new member, the Gainesville Red Elephants. They're the new bully. The Loganville yeah. Red Devils, the Flowery Branch Falcons, Cedar Shoals, Jaguars, and the Clark Central Gladiators. Oh, I tell you what, never get tired of looking at that family portrait. Brings back memories of the old drug stores back in the day. All right, we're going back to live action here. And Colvin. so, Colvin... And he's got a man complete, and he's going to score a touchdown. He sure is. That's a well-run play. Great execution again by North Oconee. And, again, they're doing it with the small underneath stuff in the passing game. Yeah, once again, the Gladiator defense uh, missing something right there. They're not uh, picking up on that read. but. Uh, and I think North Oconee might go for two. Very well executed play right there. 14 to 12, your score. Extra point don't really help you here. Let's see what they decide to do. Is that Colvin running back in? I believe it is. Yeah. Oh, no, that's uh, that's uh, number 16. So that's Adcock. Adcock. There you go. It might be lying Colvin up at a receiver spot. Let's see. 14-12 yep, our score, 11-53 to go in the game. And North Oconee is going to try to tie this, this game up. Colvin's down here to your bottom side of your screen in the, in the slot. Coming across. And that's what exactly right, he's got pressure. Looking. and Oh, I think we tipped it away, did we? Sure did. Yes, sir. Broken good up. pursuit and good coverage. Broken up by number five, Jamel Israel, on the play. So the Gladiators do give up a touchdown, but once again they stop him on the extra point. So with 11.53 left in the fourth quarter, your score, North Oak County Titans 12 and Clark Central High School Gladiators 14. 
Buster, I'd really like to see the, the offense get get a good long drive here and put about 70 yards together. Well, and, and, and this is where they need to come back on the field and answer and answer the score at North County just put up. And Cameron, of course, he has seemed a lot more relaxed this second half. So it'll be, be interesting to see where, where we go with this drive here. And, of course, tonight after the ball game, Athens Chevrolet is going to be for, uh, taking care of both teams tonight, let the teams mingle since it's their first meeting. Athens Chevrolet's brought it down a few cars and uh, going to be offering some drinks. And the, some snacks for each ball club down here in the end zone. After there you the see game. some of the beautiful cars that Athens Chevrolet brought here to the game for people to look and enjoy. And they'll have a tent down there, like you said, Chuck. And our big corporate sponsor, Athens Chevrolet, they do so many fine things, not only for these two teams tonight, but for the GITV service as well. And they got one of those Chevy boats down there, that electric car. One of them things you just plug up. How about that? That's great. Great stuff. End over end kick going to be received around the 15. By Willingham again. Of course, the Gladiators take over first and 10 from their own 30 yard line. I'll tell you what, I know we got to wait a week and a day on it, but I'm just waiting to watch uh, Willingham and Payne catch one of those kickoffs and take off with it. Yeah, see what happens. There's no doubt that's one of Coach Riles' trademark special teams. And of course, you saw the block pun already tonight that led to one of the Gladiators' touchdowns. Uh, that's, of course, has been a tradition here at Clark Central since Coach Riles came. Uh, I remember his first year, special teams won so many games, especially two of them against Cedar Shoals. That's right. Cameron under center, 14-12, our score. Gladiators lead by two, 11.53 to go in the game, and Jelani Payne is going to tuck it up the middle for about three, maybe four, before he's met by two white jerseys. Much better run. Looks like he might have picked up five on the carry. And he's, you know, good swarm tackling there by the – Titans, 18 and number eight in there, uh, but that's he picked up five. That's, that's good right, play. good spot. First, first, that's probably one of the better <laughs> first downs we've had. Yeah, all one of the one of the few positive first down plays we've had this season. And Jelani lines up deep. Yeah, he does. He wants to get that burst going. Second and five, he wants to get that head of steam going when he hits that line. Cameron with two receivers, one to the left, one to the right. Gives some instructions to Payne. Now he talks to his line. It's going to put Denzel Maxey in motion. And we're going to give the Payne to the left side. Got a hole. And he breaks it off for a first down and maybe two more. First down Gladiators on the 43. Much better on the ground. Getting a little grind going. Getting that offensive line to explode off the ball. Picking up uh, seven yards right there. Let's talk about that line, Chuck. You got Tucker Crumpton. You got... uh, Number 71, Chris Jones. uh, The center, Deshaun White. uh, Sean Hess. And, uh, I mean, they're doing a great job up there right now. Number 58, Sean Hess. Great job opening up the holes. Offensive line doing their job. Of course, number 78, Demario. Demario Price, that was the big name I was missing. And they didn't know if he was going to play tonight or not. He was a little bit banged up from uh, last Friday's scrimmage, but good to see him out there. Cameron fakes left, rolls right. He's got a man wide open. Oh, did he make the catch almost? Couldn't hold on. He had it momentarily, but just could not pull it in. And having, he's upset with himself. Yeah, having turned, turned himself a little sideways, he got injured maybe on the play. Uh, well, he landed kind of funny. Quavon Scott. Yeah, man. He's back up and moving. I think he just he got himself turned the wrong way and couldn't make that catch. Well, it would have been a great one if he had pulled it in. I mean, he was in air, twisted, turning, and uh, almost made a circus catch there, but of course, that couldn't ball quite was, pull it that in. Ball was a little high too, I thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Cameron gets these throws down, folks. He's going to be on pace to do another, uh, have another year like he had last year. Over 1,700 yards passing last year, Cameron. July Payne up the middle with a good surge. Another six, seven-yard run by Payne. Yeah, if not eight, but well, they're, they're going to give him seven when it looks like. And, uh, you know, the offense starting to open up some holes, Chuck. Number eight on the tackle, uh, Santavius Shields for North Dakota. Yeah, third and three is a much better situation. 9.54 to go. The clock's running. Clark Central enjoys a two-point lead, 14-12. to 12. We're in the I formation. Johnson under center. 
He drops back. He wants to throw complete to the 45. First down. Jaquan Dowdy on the on the catch. And of course, he was met immediately by number 38. I'll tell you what, Dowdy and uh, Statham's done a great job catching the ball tonight. Yeah, and that's all you need out of that play. Just get the first down. Right. Just, just, just get get another four four downs to take another stab at the end zone. And that was a bang bang play. I mean, he was getting tackled as he caught it. So just holding on is the thing there. Cameron gives the paint again, and Payne could not shake the tackle this time. He's dragged down about a yard behind the line. You know, Alex Bryant is also getting a lot of work off that offensive line tonight, number seventy. I'll tell you what, Chuck. I got to see him in the weight room a couple of days ago. That guy's huge. He is a Big guy. Well, he's a senior. Yeah. Well, he's he's he has put his work in, put his time in. He is a big dude. Uh, dwarf me by a good two or three inches, and I thought I was tall, but he's a big guy. Payne alone setback. Denzel Maxi in motion. Cameron fakes the handoff to the left, rolls to the right, and he wants to hit Maxi on the run and does, and it's a first down again for the Gladiators. That's gonna be good. Yeah, of course, for the Clark Central. First down, and once again, number eight on the tackle. Santavius Shields on the tackle. But not after the Gladiators get a big first down. That's uh, a big play when they stop Jelani on first down. That's a big play right there. The different thing about this drive for the first time is seeing Clark Central picking up yards in chunks now. Yes. Once again, we talked about getting that uh, answer in the – Answering the score, yeah, you're exactly right. That's what they're doing. We're on the 35. Cameron, he wants for the home run. He's got Saudi complete. Did they give it to him? They're going to mark him down the one. One yard line. Wow, what an effort by Dowdy to try to get in the end zone. Well, you know, he had to go down to make that catch and then to keep his feet and turned. I thought he was in the end zone, but uh, they well, didn't give it to him. A heck of an effort. Great job by Cameron to find Dowdy breaking loose down the middle. And Cameron's going to sneak it in, touchdown. Touchdown, glad well, that's the whistle blew. I don't think we were set. Wow, and look, Riles is mad about something. We were not set. Coach Riles is all the way out. He is field. hollering about something. But the, the officials did not call it. But uh, I don't, you know, they put Ward in, Baylor Ward, number 32, and and he was trying to count players, thought we had too many. I think we had too many. I don't think we were set. No, they they backed us up no, three yards? No, they gave us the touchdown. And we're gonna oh, take okay. The field. okay. Or extra points. So, Max so, Main, number 13, going on for the extra point. So, a touchdown by Clark Simpson makes it 20 to 12. But uh, I tell you, Riles is he's still wanting well, an he explanation about something. Upset. Another offensive lineman out there that's getting some extra. Uh, Deshaun Edwards, number 77. I'm glad to see. Glad to see him finally get some reps, yeah. ain't it? He's had some knee problems mm-hmm. and everything else, and uh, good to see him go down and get some plays. Younger brother of Demetrius Edwards, a uh, former lineman at Savannah State. I'm gonna cut down to Holly and see if she knows what was going on there. Holly, can you hear us? Yes, Chuck, I can hear you. Let me get with Coach Dallas here. Coach Dallas, what in the world just happened out there? Um, it's up to uh, the man that come out of the game. It's up to the man that come out of the game. So, but it doesn't look like the referees he called call that. He didn't call it a touchdown. It counted as a touchdown. Okay. He didn't call it. Gotcha. So, Right. Okay, so personnel issues. That's what's got Riles riled up is the personnel substitutions. Okay, so the extra point is up and is good. Jermaine is uh, three for three tonight. But, yeah, just like we thought we saw, we had too many men on the field. And, right. And we did. We weren't set. So it should have been a penalty, but the officials were. And that just goes to show you it's, it's preseason for the referees, too. They're, they're having to get in sync, too. And I guarantee you all those referees' eyes will be paying more attention now to how many men's on the field. So, nevertheless, Clark Central 21, North Oconee 12. And I know po- folks might say that uh, 
That was a, a, a bad call, but look, we were on the one. Well, and with this <laughs> brief break here, too, we want to mention one of our other corporate sponsors, Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers. One love. Man, I'll tell you what, that's some good eating. You ever been to Raising Cane's? That's some good chicken. That you. stuff's good. It's uh, mouth-watering before you even get in the door. And uh, and just one of the things that makes you glad you stop to take partake of their good Good food and good service. Well, Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers. Raising Cane's has been a great sponsor around here, and they've come on board now as a well, look at their colors. corporate sponsor here for GITV, and uh, we really appreciate everything they do. Yeah, they, they wanted to be a winner, and, the, and they, they adopted the Clark Central Red and Go, and they've been a great chicken place to we go to. we a different since. kicker in here now. It looks like it might be... Uh, this, this may be the... Uh, Foreign exchange student, Number Chuck, 22. and he's, oh, well, no, that, that, uh, okay, that's Matthew Ward. I know that uh, Ryle said he had a couple of foreign exchange students that did not get on the printed roster that uh, one of them had a leg, but uh, I'll have to get that name, get Brings that up back there the old Spaniard we had a couple of years ago. Can't remember the young man's name. Arius, wasn't it? Arius. Yes. Wasn't he a soccer star? He was. Yes, he was. yes. Wild how stuff like that stays in your head. He had, that was his nickname. They, they couldn't pronounce his name, so they just called him the Spaniard. The Spaniard. <laughs> well, there you go. Good young man. All right, North Oconee takes over on offense with 8.07 to go. 21-12 our score. And it's been all Coven and all Bryant for North Oconee as Coven hands off to his up back. Yeah, and he's met in the backfield. 51. 51, that's Ellison. And uh, number 33, Armstrong. I tell you, the defense has been playing lights out all night. They well, have, I'm uh, really, uh, you know, Coach Coach Riles was talking about 51, Ellison. And the young sophomore has really looked good. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed. And, and just, you know, every time you say those names, you hear sophomore and junior behind them. That's just so exciting for the next couple of years here at Clark Central. Well, and it's impressive with him, too. There's young man is deaf and we've got an interpreter down there on, on no the yeah and just love it to see him making some strides boy look Colvin got every bit of those yards on his own did he not I oh. mean he just fought for those yards he five made, yard game. made six guys miss before Drinko Statham was able to come in there and make the tackle quick feet quick feet of course Bam Bam Miller in there also number 97 yeah, Colvin is a uh, boy. It'd, it'd be nice to have him on your side of the field. What's the word on him? As impressive as he's looked, uh, any any college recruits? Not that the, not that I have heard of. Now, don't quote me on that because I'm not really sure. I know that I know the number one here, the K1 Bryant. Right. Yeah, he's getting, getting looked some at. looks by a lot of people. But. Well, this guy might be one of the best kept secrets. Oh, fumble oh. on the play. Colvin's able to get right back on it. Center, number 74, uh, Daniel Brown. Looks like they had a little issue there, but he was able to get right back on it. But that's going to bring up fourth down for the Titans. Can't tell who their punter is here coming on to the field. 21-12, our score, six minutes, six minutes and eight seconds to go in the game. And Clark Central with a nice well, like nine-point lead. I'd like to see us uh, take it and put one more on the board. Oh, yeah, we need to. It would be a good good uh, momentum builder for next week. Is the clock now ever winding down, 550 and counting. A high snap. Recovered nice. We almost blocked it. But forced the punter uh, to go vertical with it. And there's a flag on the play. They're going to. I think he uh, did. He not touch the ball. They're going to get it. They're going to Ellison jump to block it. And Stovall really getting into the young sophomore's face. That was just one of those things. I, Coach Riles pulling him over just to talk to him, explain to him. Well, right, you know Riles appreciated the effort. Yeah, no doubt. And he's explaining to him what he did wrong. But I don't think that was a roughing than it was a running into. Right. But it's an, it's going to be good enough for the first down. Listen, you know, when you gave me the story earlier, you just got to appreciate what that young man's doing. He's deaf, and he, he's out here playing football. He's not letting that handicap slow him down. 
And hey, he's competing at a very high level here, and I mean, he almost blocked that punt. Well, and a huge, huge mistake, of course. And it's good to see Tucker Crumpton, number fifty. Yeah, everybody encouraging him. Set, you know, putting his arm around. Right. Him. Look, hang in there, buddy. That's so it. It's not the end of the world. Hey, here. stuff's gonna happen. Scrimmage game. Learn from it. Don't make that mistake again. And now, he's upset with himself. And now he's the upset de- with now the defensive line coach, of course, Marcus Washington. Uh, over there talking to him, explain to him, teaching him. And that's that's all you can ask. And, again, what did you say, Jim? Just a sophomore? That's correct. Hey, I'm impressed. Yeah. I mean, I'm very impressed, and I'm encouraged. 5'10", 222. Colvin, let's one oh, rip. He's, he's got, got a man wide, wide and he caught it. Wow, nice over-the-shoulder catch. Willie Mays style around the 25-yard line. Wow. Number 28 for North Oak County, that's Jordan Glover. Israel, you know what happened. You, you know, got got lost and uh, let him get behind you. And of course, Colvin showed strong arm right there. Well, they just picked up 20, 30, about forty-eight yards on that play. So North Oconee again finds themselves around the Clark Central twenty. Twenty-one, twelve. Don't go away. It ain't over yet. Coven. Bryant. Bryant picks up. So he's going to go. He if he can break that tackle, he's down inside the 10. Yeah, he broke uh, broke two tackles. Of course, you can't arm tackle that young man. He's, no. uh, he's a good runner. He's strong, too. Number seven, Draco Browner coming in. To, oh, he's. thought he was grabbing his hamstring there, but he's just uh, he's grabbing just, his thigh pad. Yeah. Yeah, low center of gravity, this Kayvon Bryant. And he's uh, he has showed that he is every bit of the runner is he has been advertised to be. He's a workhorse. Coven under center is going to give to Brian again. Brian's going to shake out to the right side, but we wrap him up around the line of scrimmage. Cavanti Bug there making a the wrap up first and getting through that and then cleaned up. So 4.52 to go here in the fourth quarter, but North Oconee trying to score. We lead by two scores. We're up by nine. It would take a North Oconee touchdown. And another score of some sort to either get a lead. Well, uh, you know, we're, we're playing a, a good, solid ball club here that went to the semifinals last year. And well, the main thing I've noticed, Chuck, along with their speed on defense, they're very disciplined. I don't think they've had many flags There goes Bryant. And touchdown. Yep. Made it look easy. Now I'll get the North Oak County fans excited across the way. As now it is 21-18, they're within a field goal. And so now you may see them just kick the extra point here and hope for a chance to get a game-winning field goal later. And, you know, the one thing I do notice a little bit tonight, uh, we look a little tired, maybe, I, you know, I, that we didn't show last year. Well, I, I, you know, I don't know my interpretation of what's going on. Both defenses came out so strong and we're playing so lights out but i think now both defenses are starting to get a little tired that, both sides that kick is up and it is good so with uh, 422 left in the ball game north oak county titans 19 Clark Central high school 21 well here's where we got to an answer and let's let's send it down to holly and see if she's got anything going on down there Chuck and Buster, I think you're right. I think as the evening has gone on, the boys are tired. They've been at school all day, building the stamina for a game like this. Um, but you got four minutes and 22 seconds. But uh, let's see what they're made of and uh, get some enthusiasm back. Okay, thank you, Holly. All right. And also, one of our other corporate sponsors we want to mention tonight, of course, the Morris Center. Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine right here in Athens, Watkinsville, and Winder. Thank you, the Morris Center, for all you do. Yeah, I bet they treat a bunch of athletes from both of these schools. Athens and Watkinsville locations. Morris Center has been a big-time sponsor for Clark Central Athletics over the last several years. They'll get you right. All right. The Titans lined up to kick off, of course. Jelani Payne and Rodney Willingham back deep for the Gladiators. Of course, once the catch is made, uh, the ball will be blown dead, and the ball will be moved to the 30-yard line where the Gladiator just take over first. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you what, Chuck, this game ain't over. 4:22 to go. We need to knock out two or three first downs here and put it on ice. They have Phil go wins it for North Oconee. We've got to get the ball down the field and just mainly don't let them have it back. 
So a, a good situation to be in here. This is something that uh, we got to learn to do. Drain that clock and protect that lead and and Let's course, see what we do here. Of course, the Mario Price has not played here in the third and fourth quarter, I don't think. So uh, that's one good thing. You know you've got that senior leadership coming back next week. Mm -hmm. Fit in there with Tucker. Maxi in motion. Cameron going to give the pain. He's bent in the backfield, but bounces off a guy, and he's going to break out to the right side. No, that is Willingham. I'm sorry. And Willingham just broke it off for 13 yards around right side. Right down by number 26 for the Titans, J.J. Jared, and number 28, Jordan Glover. Big run there. That's uh, the best we've looked right there. Well, that's a big first down. That gives you some more time to run off, and we got a guy down. Yeah, it looks like it might be Chris Jones. That's not a good sign. No, no, no that's Bryant. Brian. Big. He's trying to shake it off, though. I think he got rolled up on his ankle. Number 76 coming in to give him a little breather. That's Dijon Yearby. Yeah, Alex Bryant, he's uh, just a little gimpy. I think you're right, Chuck. I think he just got rolled on at the end of the play. I think he'll be fine. And he's jogging. That's a good sign. <laughs> yep. Dr. Sexton, of course, uh, the, the sports medicine here at uh, Clark Central. Sheena Watkins out there. So the clock continues to run. 4.01, four minutes. Cameron gives to his up back. Maxie. Picks up about a yard and a half off left side. And that's just one of those plays. you got to run to keep everybody honest. Of course, number 58 on the tackle, John Bundy for North. Well, I really don't think you'll see Clark throw it here unless it gets third and maybe five, third and six. I think they'll try to keep it on the ground and run some clock. Well, and this is one of the aspects of the game that you got to do, too. you mm -hmm. got to kill the clock. you got to be able to show that you can run the ball and move. That's right. Chance. Exactly right. 3.28 to go. We're in the fourth quarter. It's second and about eight. Clark Central enjoying a two-point lead, 21-19 over North Oconee. Cameron does drop back to pass. He fires. He throws complete around the 44-yard line. First down the clock. Dowdy. We'll stop momentarily, but Dowdy's had a big night, Chuck. Dowdy on the completion, of course, brought down by number 38 for North Oconee. That would be Rob Reba. But that's going to be good for Gladiator first down, of course, Three minutes and 14 seconds to go. You know, tonight's not about how big you win. Uh, you do want to win, but it's about execution. So first and 10 Gladiators. They're on the 45. They give to Willingham, and he squirts off the left side for maybe six, seven yards. you got to love that spurt, seven yards on first down. You, get, you know, that's just a big, big run. 58, uh, having to come back downfield, John Bundy off that. I mean, you know, you're blowing that, off, that defensive line that seven yards off the ball, and he's making the tackle, of course. Uh, you got to like that from the offensive line. And San Santrevious Shields also in. Cameron Johnson, second and three. He's shouting out instructions to the right side. And we're going to give to Willingham again. Willingham, nice little spin move, and he picks it up another seven, eight yards for a first down off left side. Just a really good run. Number 18 in on the tackle for North Oconee. That would be J.L. Banks. Uh, but, yeah, he spun and got everything out of that play. Well, it's a big first down, and the clock winds down close to the two-minute mark now. So, Clark Central in business. If they can protect this ball, maybe knock out one more first down, it might be on ice. I still like to see us get it in the end zone here. I mean, you're, oh, yeah. you're, you're trying to get a drive at the end of a ball game, and this is what you're simulating right here. 147, 146 to go in the game. Cameron gives to his up back. Maxie, Maxie ricochets off two, three, four white shirts before he's dragged down around the 22-yard line. Number seven, eight-yard gain right there. And uh, brought down once again by number 58 for the Titans, John Bundy. So here okay. we go. Bringing up a second. And two for the Gladiators. One sixteen to go. Coach Riles is just grinding out the clock. He's probably not going to score. He's just going to probably run the clock. Cameron Johnson under center. One oh six to go. 
Drops back. He eludes a couple of North Oconee Titan rushers. And now he's going to tuck it up the middle. He's down to the 10, to the 6, before he's finally, I don't guess knocked down, but finally slides down. Yeah, I'd like to see that. I, I don't like him taking a shot. He just kind of dove between a couple of North Oconee players. Number 5, Travis Clark. Got everything he could get out of it and didn't take a shot. So 53 seconds here to go in the game. Clark Central's inside the 10 on about the 6 with 49 seconds and counting. And is that Baylor Ward at the fullback that, position that now? Is. They gave uh, Maxie a little breather. Might just see him take the play clock all the way down and give the Ward up the middle here. Cameron with Maxie in motion. Oh, Maxie's also in the ball game. And they give to Willingham, and he wants the end zone and finds it. Touchdown, Clark Central. Nice drive, nice end of the game drive, and Chuck, the momentum that brings. Really, really impressive drive. Didn't have to throw the ball a whole lot. Your quarterback kept it, showed a little bit of uh, motion out of himself, got a little bit of elusiveness, was able to stretch things out and pick up some big yards on the play. Well, no mistakes that drive, no penalties. The offensive line opened up some holes, and, uh, hey, that's the way you want to finish with a Max statement. Remain on for the kick. The kick is up. And I don't think that one's good. Missed well, that yeah, one. First miss of the night. Yeah, so he goes three for four tonight. But uh, all in all, really impressive drive. Able to throw a few passes in there, but we mostly kept it on the ground and got some yards. Some big first down plays, getting seven, eight yards on the carry. Well, that was the key. They kept moving the chains. And, uh, and then they busted a big play with uh, – Willingham and Cameron, and, and, and Willingham again, I think his second touchdown of the evening. Uh, after that touchdown, let's take it down to Holly and see what she's got on the side. Holly Ward, take it over, Holly. Uh, yes, I've got Dr. Sexton here, who's our team doctor. Dr. Sexton, uh, this evening, folks staying hydrated. You're taking good care of us? I think Alex just had some cramping going on. That's right. Yeah, but he's okay. I think he went back in, so he's doing okay. Perfect. We really appreciate it. You've been a big supporter of Gladiator football. We really appreciate that over the years. You're welcome. Back to you guys. Well, another nice interview by Holly. Just another one of our tricks of the trade where we're bringing you live reports from the sideline and Hoping you're enjoying this broadcast here on GITV as we kick the ball off and it's fielded on the five by the North Oconee Titan receiver with 28 seconds to go. Clark Central leading 28-19. 27-19. Our, our fourth and final sponsor of the night. Yeah, we really can't do anything without them. They do so much for Clark Central. Bulldog Signs right here from Athens, Georgia. Bulldog Signs does so much right here around Clark Central High School. And uh, Buster, they do a good job. They're, they're good people. Real good people. The kind of people I'd let in my household any day of the week. I hear you. Yeah. All right. So the Gladiators go back out on defense from 28 seconds to go, and uh, we'll wrap this thing up. And I look for uh, Culver to probably sling it a couple of times here. Of course, right after the game, uh, Athens Chevrolet is going to be taking care of each team. In the inaugural game here between North Dakota and Clark Central. Interception. Picked off. By number 28, Jelani Payne. Wow. So I think we're going to get to see our favorite play there, Buster. Maybe the victory. Well, formation. I'll tell you what, it, it, it was a hard fought win here in this scrimmage, and Clark Central earned every bit of this. Um, valiant effort by the North Oconee Titans. They didn't shy away from the. From the uh, challenge here tonight, they they stuck it good, stuck good with our gladiators for all four quarters, and uh, I think both teams have a lot of positives coming uh, this season. Hey, uh, Clark Central's got the win on the scoreboard, but, but this North Oconee team has nothing to be ashamed of. No, sir. They, they played very well uh, against Clark Central. They could have easily won this game. And they, and they show that they are a team to be reckoned with in, in their region. So the clock's winding down. I'll tell you what, good sportsmanship going on out there. Both teams shaking hands and slapping each other on the helmet, and that's just respect. Final score here from Billy Henderson Stadium, Clark Central 27, North Oconee 19. We're going to let the teams meet each other. We're going to try to give you a little coverage of the Athens Chevrolet 
uh, promotion with the two teams after the game, sharing some treats. And, uh, and we want to remind everybody, next next Friday night, 7, 7.30, right here at Billy Henderson Stadium, Clark Central High School takes on the Marist War Eagles right here at Billy Henderson Stadium. Please join us next week, and uh, I'm going to turn it over to Buster and as they're going to bring you a little bit of coverage here yet from the sidelines. Might even be able to hook up with Holly Ward down here after the ball game. So, Holly, what you got going on? Maybe turn it over to you right now. Guys, it looks like the fellas are shaking hands here at uh, the Gladiator Sea, and the coaches are talking and enjoying uh, some conversations. Uh, let me grab Coach Riles. Coach Riles? I uh, know your guys are going over to have some Gatorade at the Athens Chevrolet uh, section here. Uh, what are your thoughts on your game this evening? The good thing is it, it gives us something to work on, and we got a lot of stuff to work on. So, uh, But we came out and competed a little bit, and, um, you know, we, as, uh, when it's good, it's bad. When it's bad, it's good. So we'll we'll look at the film tomorrow and, and try to get a little better every day. Well, Coach Riles, I know you've been telling them to work harder, and hopefully tonight – will uh, give that exclamation point to your point. I hope so. I hope so because it'll be on film, won't it? They will see everything they did. So thanks, Coach, Thank and you. good luck this week with practice. Thank you, Alvin. Chevrolet tailgate here at the end of the ball game, and Buster will be right back in a few moments. We are here with the uh, Athens Chevrolet is providing refreshments for the guys this evening. And uh, Nick, we've got uh, several players here. Let's see if we can get with some of them here and uh, see what's going on. Jaquan, you just finished a big game this evening. Tell us uh, how it felt to be out there tonight. It felt great. Uh, Y'all have got a few kinks to work out, I think. This week you can get refocused and ready for uh, Maris that you'll be uh, oh, yes, facing we next be week. We will be ready. With it. Well, good luck and a good game this evening. So, Holly, bringing you some interviews from down there on the field as the players are gathering around and collecting some uh, – I guess after Chevrolet's giving them some drinks and some treats down there at their uh, service tent. They're getting a Gatorade and a Snickers, and uh, Athens Chevrolet has uh, donated for us. And let's see here if we can get a hold of Alex. Alex, you got some cramping going on there at the end of the game, didn't you? Yes, ma'am. Everything okay now? Oh, uh, yes, ma'am. My left calf is cramping and my right quad is cramping. So, uh, so well, yeah. fortunate, fortunately, it's not too hot out here right now. And get some fluids in you, and you'll be okay. Yes, ma'am. With it. Well, good luck this week at practice as you prepare for Marist. All right, thank you. So, big Alex Bryant, I hope he didn't hurt his knee too bad. It looked like he was limping a little bit at the last of the game there. He said just cramping is all. So good I, deal. I think, good he's, deal. Uh, think he's okay. Kayvon? Kayvon, you came on tonight playing linebacker. You uh, changed to the other side of the ball. How does it feel to play defense? It feels very good. I'm learning defense, and it's, it's very well. I know sometimes it's frustrating uh, learning a new position, but I think you're getting the hang of it. Yes, I am. Coach Rousey moved me over there, and I think it's doing the best for me right now. Wonderful. Well, we are excited about some of the things that you can do, and uh, we know that you guys on defense are going to be hitting hard. Um, Draco, how about sitting up here and talking to us? Draco, you had a lot of action out there tonight. You were uh, back there receiving punts, playing on defense and playing offense. Uh, you probably need a double Gatorade. <laughs> What's all the uh, energy uh, boost out there for you being able to play both sides of the ball? Oh, it's just, it's just the hunger just to get to, back to the dome. It's just to win again. Got to get it this time. 
my, my own senior year. Got to go get it. Well, we're expecting big things from you as a senior this year, and we're going to be supporting you, and uh, hopefully uh, next week you'll get a return and uh, make some action happen back there. All right. With it. Well, stay focused this week at practice, and uh, we've got a few uh, few things to mis uh, mistakes to correct and uh, hopefully get refocused and ready for Marist. Uh -huh. Good luck. All right, thanks. Buster, I think the guys are pretty tired. Uh, let's uh, fortunately uh, have my son here I get to uh, talk to. This is Baylor Ward. Baylor, pretty hot out there this evening, wasn't it? Uh, it was hot, but we were used to practice and everything. With it. So y'all were acclimated to it pretty well with it. Well, uh, hope you guys had some fun out there. Yes, ma'am. Holly, we're trying to find you on the camera. Where are you at down there? I'm kind of right in the midst. Let me see here if I can uh, get with Coach Self. I'm right here. If you can see the white shirts. Yeah, I see. Uh, we're, we're shooting over there around the goalpost. Come, come back um, further, closer to the tent. To the tent. Okay, we got you. We're zooming in now. Gotcha. All right. I got Call to Coach Self. Tell him he's live on the World Wide Web. All right, Coach Self. Uh, Buster Crumpton's uh, wanting you to know that you are live on the wide, World Wide Web. Uh, you want to talk about your defense tonight and what you saw? Well, you know, we made some good plays early on. We played well. We had some confidence early. And I told him, you know, they're at halftime. But, you know, these guys are starting North Oconee. They they have some really good athletes, especially at the quarterback position, running back position. We got to go out there. We got to squash that uh, their confidence because right now it's seven nothing going into halftime. And they feel that they can compete with the five eighteen. So they're gonna come out ready to play us in the second half. We can stop that. And uh, they got a couple big plays on us. And, uh, and our momentum. And uh, we got a lot of work to do. With it. Well, Coach Self, there's one thing that I hear over and over again from these ball players when I talk to them. Is Coach Self teaches me. Coach Self has me prepared. They believe in you, and they would run through a brick wall for you. So whatever you're doing, um, it, it's really making a difference in their lives. So uh, it's obvious you're a really good teacher. They speak highly of you. And uh, what's your secret? Well, I just I have a passion for the game. And the, and the most important thing, I have a passion for kids. I love being around young people. And, uh, and I love this game. When you have that together, it makes a difference. Well, they, it definitely is obvious in the way they're coached and the way they play for you. And so it's a lot of fun to watch. And uh, I know you're going to be busy this week. Yes, very busy. Watch. Marist is a tough team. And, you know, and tonight, tonight was a learning lesson for us. And I think it's going to open our guys' eyes and say, hey, we got a long way to go and a lot of work to get done before we play Marist. With it. What's the, uh, the, your favorite thing you were able to see tonight from your players? There at the end, the passion, the sense of urgency that, hey, that these guys are a good team and we better play. And they realize now that, you know, we're not the almighty, untouchable gladiators. That we've got to just go out there and uh, play every snap as hard as we can. And that they're like it's, there's no, no tomorrow. Uh, what's the one thing that you really, really need to work on this week? Conditioning and tackling. So back to the basics. Yes. So you might uh, go back to the old John Wooden approach of breaking it down uh, piece by piece of actually how to tackle. That's exactly right. We're going to do a lot of tackling circuits, individual tackling. We're going to hit and hit and hit. With it. Well, good luck this week, and I uh, hope you all have a great practice. We'll be looking forward to the defense. I know uh, Clark Central has a history that defense is always strong, and we really appreciate the work that you put into this and also the time that you put into it, and I appreciate what you do for the kids because it, it really makes a big difference. Thanks a lot, Coach. Well, thank you. With it. All right, that's Coach Aaron Self, the defensive coordinator for the Gladiators, who, uh, like I said, these guys really, really think highly of him. Well, he does a great job every year, Eric, uh, Coach Self does, getting that defense ready. And uh, you cannot say enough about the Clark Central defenses he's produced over the last few years, for sure. Well, I'm going to pass over my mic here to Chuck Wegman. He might uh, find a few folks from North Oconee he might like to speak with. Yeah, of course, I'm here with 
with uh, Greg Cole, the owner of Athens Chevrolet. Of course, his daughter goes to North Oconee, and, and Greg, it, this has been a good opportunity here tonight for us, and uh, Athens Chevrolet to be able to be here, the inaugural game meeting between North Oconee and Clark Central. We're, uh, we're really excited to be here. Um, just talked with Coach Riles, and uh, I think both teams look pretty good, and I think they're going to have a, a, a good season on, on both both uh, fronts. There's there's no doubt North Oconee has got a fabulous ball club. Uh, they showed a lot of things tonight. That number one, Kayvon, Kayvon or K1 uh, Bryant, is a good looking, lo good looking running back, and of course Colvin at, at quarterback, he's a heck of an athlete. Uh, is indeed. Uh, we're we're excited to have these two schools playing. Uh, you know, North Oconee's not been around that long, but. Uh, and they certainly play in different classes, but it was uh, fun to have two local Athens area schools playing each other. No doubt about it. And that was Greg Cole, the owner of Athens Chevrolet. And Athens Chevrolet is a proud sponsor of North Oconee High School and Clark Central High School. And we're glad to be here tonight to uh, provide drinks and snacks for both teams, let them talk a little bit, intermingle. And uh, it's been a wonderful night here at Clark Central High School, Billy Henderson Stadium. I'm going to turn it back over, Buster, to uh, Holly, Holly Ward. Buster, we're going to see if we can get a couple of the North Oconee players as they're coming over. I'm uh, looking for Nick Colvin, see if I can find him. It's a sea of white jerseys. Help me out if you see him walking across the field. Where's Nick Colvin? Where is he? There we go. I found him. Buster, are you with me still? All right. I've actually got both quarterbacks standing here this evening. And uh, Nick, uh, my name's Holly Ward. I'm with uh, Gladiator Internet TV. And this is Nick Colvin and Cameron Johnson. Here standing, both the quarterbacks that went against each other this evening. And uh, Nick, I remember watching you play soccer uh, several years ago, and you were trying to figure out soccer or football and playing both at the same time. Your co your dad, uh, Greg Colvin, was coaching football and coached my sons and uh, really enjoyed that. So, uh, gentlemen, what was it like out there going against each other this evening? CA too, so we just grew up playing each other, so it was really cool kind of growing up and then they go ahead and hurt, so. Being able to play against each other. Yeah. Uh, camera, if you'll come over here, I think we can get the, the cameras right up there, but uh, uh, Cameron, Nick Nick got a quarter, a uh, touchdown on you this evening, didn't he? Uh, <laughs> I think he's got an arm on He's got a freaking cannon. He's slinging it out there. Yeah, it, it was real competitive all today. I think you surprised him with your speed, didn't you, Nick? Oh, I, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I love the reaction. 
Well, it was a great game. It was a lot of fun. And I know both of you are opening next week with some, some big guns. You guys are going to play St. Pius. We're going to have Maris coming in here, and uh, it's going to be pretty exciting to play with it. I know you both are going to watch a lot of films this week. Um, playing quarterback is a special position. You kind of have the weight of the rest of the team and trying to lead them. What's something that has helped both of you to kind of take on that role and really feel confident? Yeah, I mean, you just said it. I mean, confidence. you, you got to show the, the line, the receivers are running yeah. out. You're confident. You know what's going on. Take control. With it. Yeah. Cameron? Uh, yeah, like you said, the offense and defense definitely looks up to you. You lead by example. And also, I think we have a great coaching staff, and they help out, and they make my job a lot easier. With it. Well, gentlemen, you both are very fine young men, and we appreciate your uh, competitive spirit. Uh, we were able to come out here tonight, have a good time, and push ourselves, and uh, really appreciate you uh, coming and uh, letting us interview. Look forward to big things for North Oconee and for Clark Central this season, and best of luck to both of you. And uh, Buster, we're going to close out tonight. I think everybody's finishing up. This